we began, God is still speaking, welcome, and I behold the Christ in each of you. Let us love one another. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at First Congregational Church. Our mission is to feed the hungry body, mind, and spirit. And as I like to share with you when I am the liturgist, I'm mindful that there's many of our church family, our extended families and our family that are not with us today for one reason or another. I would like us to take this time to be quiet, to be mindful, to take a relaxing breath and close your eyes and join with me as we pray in those that we love. Just for a moment, we begin. Say their names aloud, whisper, or in your mind. And so it is, we are gathered one with each other in spirit. I'm going to start with our announcements today. And I'm going to start off by reading what we always share as liturgists is that we're glad to be here today. We're glad to be here and celebrating worship together, that everyone is here and that everyone is safe and we pray that everyone is loved and happy. It is our hope to remain open. However, please stay to, up to date with possible closures via our weekly in the know emails. We must remain attentive to state and local guidelines. Our COVID guidelines are listed at the back of the bulletin for your review. Please join us for our annual Wednesday Music and Meditation via our Wednesday Zoom meetings at 3 p.m. during the Lenten season. We will have various people leading the meditations and a few guest musicians as well. Meeting info can be obtained in our weekly in the know email or calling the church office. And I do understand, and she's here today, Mary Warren has been uh, very supportive of this and has set it up. So perhaps if you'd like to touch base with her, I know that it's going to be beautiful and it will be different. It's time to order our Easter plants. All plants are $10 each. The due date for your order and payment is March 14th. Please submit with your offering or by sending to the church office. And you're gonna find in your bulletin in order form and it's very clear and it'll be explained to you does your board or committee have a meeting coming up please be sure to let the church office know so we can get it on the calendar and make appropriate arrangements to you i'm going to share with you that i work um, closely with cindy as facility manager and carry and when there is a meeting here okay we go to great efforts cindy goes to great efforts on a daily moment by moment basis making this sanctuary and anywhere that you're going to be the front doors the door handles the windows the rugs the meeting rooms that you're going to be in the doorknobs the tables and the chairs that's just to mention a few so it's very helpful to Cindy or anyone supporting her that you let her know that you're expected here at the church so she can be prepared for you. So thank you so much for taking that into consideration. The church council will meet March 2nd at 10 a.m. in the fellowship hall. And I'd like to thank Judy Gardner for her beautiful, simplistic, 
and meaningful display on the communion table. You may want to look at it later. It's indicative of the season of Lent and our theme of stepping stones. Beautiful, Judy. Thank you so much. And thank you to Cindy for changing out the colors of the season, moving into purple and the beautiful purple flowers. So at this time, I would like to share the peace with you. And as I look at each of you, I say, may the peace of God always be with you. And do take the time at this moment and make eye contact. Make sure your eyes are smiling. Wave to people. Blow kisses through your mask. Make sure your eyes are smiling. It's the one way that we can certainly connect with each other. So I can, and feel the energy. It's like zaps, love zaps, boom, boom, boom. May the peace of God be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's begin our worship by ringing the bell and bringing in the light. Nancy that was so beautiful so beautiful 
Now together, let us read our statement of oneness, followed by humming oneness by Connie Castro. Statement of oneness, we begin. We were made in the image of God, thus as we grow in faith and mature in spirit, that image shall shine all the more clearly. Like Jesus, we are children of God. Thus, as our birthright, we shall live all our days surrounded by unconditional love. Humanity, the image of God, is beautiful in God's sight, part of a magnificent creation. Therefore, we are beautiful in God's eyes. The scriptures declare that the entire kingdom of God is within us. Also, we live our lives immersed in divinity. We gather to celebrate that sacred and wondrous truth. Many hurtful and unjust things happen in our world, motivated by hatred or fear. Yet also there is love in our hearts. Let us declare that love, acknowledge it is of God, and promise to grow in love day by day. Amen. <laughs> From Psalm 25, 1 through 10, I begin. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemy enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness, O oh Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his keep decrees. Our unison prayer. Dear God, we are in a world surrounded by temptations. On our strength, we confess that we have yielded many times to temptations despite our desire to resist. Help us to draw near to you and depend on your strength to overcome our temptations. Increase our faith to accept your unconditional love for us and renew our mind to remember your promise to be with us always. By your grace and through the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, teach us to fear not and to with genuine and unconditional love. We pray through Jesus Christ, who first loved us. Amen. And shall we hum our first hymn of the day, which is number 16. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Mm -hmm. 
their beautiful solos. It means a lot for me to hear the words, actually, so I want to thank you so much. Our first scripture today is Genesis 9, 8-17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall thou be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring the clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh that is on the earth, the word of God. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up, out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit 
descending like a dove on him, and a voice from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the word of God. When I first look at this story, I back up a little bit and uh, look at Genesis uh, chapter 6, verse 6. And if you pay attention, you will see that uh, it says, God was sorry that he made human beings. God was sorry. Why? Because human beings were so bad, so cruel, that it grieves God's heart. And so what did God decide to do? I don't know if you've ever been uh, you know, disappointed by people and uh, you feel so kind of sad and angry. Uh, there was a little feeling of that when uh, January the 6th, you remember how the rioters enter that uh, Capitol building and everybody was like, oh, sad, grief, why? But the people that God created, if you look at Genesis, it says God was grieved. He was sorry that he made human beings. So he said, okay, I'm going to destroy them. Wow. I don't know how you feel when people disappoint you or kind of uh, let you down or when your children are very, very bad to the point that but God was sorry so he decided to destroy them so that's the one side you know in the sense that God was human uh, having feeling and yet another verse says but Noah found favor with God Favor with God. And you know the story about uh, God told Noah to build a boat. Any of you been to Williamstown? There's actually an ark there. I have a friend who lives in uh, uh, Patria, Indiana. If you've ever been to Indiana, you know that there's a river, uh, Ohio River, and you cross the river, it's Kentucky. And then the other side is Ohio. So there's, uh, you know, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio. And we went to this ark Noah built. <laughs> and they actually built a three-story ark. I mean, it was big. And when God asked Noah to build an ark, you know how many people reacted to Noah? I don't know if ever God asked you to do something. And then... People say, everybody thought he was what? Yeah, crazy. You know, there's no rain. And here he's building this big boat. And, uh, but Noah found favor in God's sight. And then you know the story. When it rained and flood, 40 days, 40 nights, people start knocking. But if you look at the whole story, you will learn that even though God was grief, God was sorry that human beings were so evil that he wanted to destroy them, but Noah found
found favor with God. So what is this rainbow covenant all about? It was very interesting as I was preparing this sermon, it turned into grace, the covenant of grace, the rainbow. You remember was the sign that God says, I will never destroy with flood again the earth human beings but Noah found favor with God and that was grace so on the one hand God wants to destroy everybody on the other hand there was grace because Noah found favor Noah somehow was upright not evil so he his wife and his what three sons and their daughters-in-law they were all in the ark with the animals can you visualize you know two by two going the whole point is the point of grace in the sense of what is God's covenant to us when I saw Nancy playing the, the, the prelude I'm dying O Lord one of my favorite hymns, I'm dying, O Lord, in a sense that grace really is an affirmation that I come from God, I belong to God, and one day, what will happen to me? I'll go back to God. So actually, if you had three sentences, the covenant is that God wants me, God wants you, as a friend. And if you look at all the stories in the Bible, we often wonder, why would God want me as a friend? Think about it. When Noah found favor in God's sight, God decided not to destroy Noah and family and children. Grace is actually a gift. You cannot earn grace. You know, somebody said, uh, what did grace do to earn God's love? Nothing. That's right. God is love, and God's love is so unconditional that God made us for who? For, for God. Have you ever wondered and said, God, you made me for you? Yes. That is grace. That is amazing grace. Because if God made me for God, that means God wants me to be God's friend. How do I know that? Well, look at your life. Because if you look at the scriptures, the only reason we know is because uh, many things happen in our life that we say, Wow, God, is that you? Last year, February 27, was Ash Wednesday, and I did the service in the uh, chapel. And surprisingly, by the grace of God, six BU students came to the service. Last Wednesday, we did a service here. And by the grace of God, five BU students came. And I was like, whoa, God, you brought them last year, and you brought them again this year. And what I learned was very interesting because uh, uh, I did uh, what we call uh, uh, name that tune okay and we're gonna try that and see if you can name that tune now those of you who were there Wednesday you can uh, give the others a chance okay <laughs> name the tune is interesting because I learned something about generation if you Ask somebody to name the tune. Say, for example, uh, uh, if you say, uh, 
Name this tune. Can you name that tune in one note? No. I pressed the wrong note. Try it again. All right. <laughs> people were able to name the tune because they went to Sunday school, they could say and sing the song, you know. And it was, you know, very easy. When the five BU students came, I played the same. And I said, have you ever heard of that song? Never. Isn't that amazing? Because they are younger generation. And you know, if the younger generations don't know this, this is actually grace because the covenant God made is God is love. For God so loved the world, he's what? Give his only son and whosoever believes in him so that this song, Jesus Loves Me, is actually very basic grace because what have I done to deserve Jesus' love? Nothing. All right, now let me play another one and see if you know this one. One note is very high. Okay, I'll play two notes. No? No? Okay. Alright, let's try again. Father in heaven, tell of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the greatest that Jesus loves me. And then the chorus is interesting because uh, you see here. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, I am so glad that Jesus loves me, Jesus loves even me. Do you know a lot of people don't believe that Jesus loves them? And some believe that me, even me, in other words, what have I done? I don't deserve Jesus' love. I'm not worthy of Jesus' love. Amazing grace is Jesus loves even me. Then we went to this other song, which is interesting because uh, this song, actually, I try to show them that, uh, you know, uh, all music are written with only seven notes. But this song, you know, uh, is different because it used what we call five notes, you know. And if you look at the uh, piano organ, you know, there are white notes and there are black notes. You know, all white notes, and then there are two black notes and three black notes. And, and there's a pattern there. You can play Amazing Grace using all the black notes. Just five of them. Do, re, mi, so, la. And if you know how to, you know, move them around, you can play all of them. 
And when I play Amazing Grace, the five BU students, they know that. I say, wow, okay, at least Amazing Grace is well known. John Newton wrote the words and uh, who wrote the melody? If you look at all the Negro spiritual, I bet you they are all pentatonic, five notes. Jesus loves me also five notes, pentatonic. I'm so glad that, you know, Jesus loves even me is also pentatonic. And for example, if you, uh, if you think of uh, uh, a Negro spiritual, any spiritual, you'll find that you can play using the five black notes. You can go home and try if you want to uh, find out because uh, it's pentatonic. Say, for example, uh, it's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. Five notes, and you can play on any instrument. Uh, it's pentatonic. Then I discovered that even the Chinese melody also pentatonic. I don't know if you know any Chinese song, Rise to greet the sun. That's pentatonic. Any of you seen the old movie, Flower Drum Song? Left hand holds a drum, right hand holds a gun. Pentatonic, five notes. So there's a lot of things that uh, we can learn about amazing grace. And what I want to share is that this rainbow covenant is the covenant that God made for you and for me. And God basically said, I'm love. God basically said, I love you unconditionally. And it's up to you to respond to that unconditional love. And when you accept that love, the first significant thing was what? Baptism. That's why you see in the New Testament, Jesus was baptized and the voice from heaven said what? You are my beloved son. So whenever you celebrate your birthday, I say celebrate also your spiritual birthday, which is your baptism. Most people don't celebrate their baptism. But I think we should start celebrating our baptism because baptism is also a covenant of grace. It's God saying to you, using the water as a symbolic gesture. So the rainbow covenant, if you look at the New Testament, is actually the covenant that Jesus said. Remember when you take communion? You know, this is my body broken for you. This is the cup of the what? New covenant. This is the blood shed for you. So that the covenant that God made with Noah, because Noah found favor in the sight of God. Noah experienced grace. Noah was not destroyed. This past week, any of you uh, watch uh, Channel 12? You know, Channel 12, uh, was showing uh, our church. We got free advertisement, actually, because uh, my wife was watching the news, and she said, oh, I saw your name on the sign. <laughs> so she took a picture and uh, sent it to our friend in Ottawa, and she said, uh, what do you think of this? She said, oh, I saw Daniel's name, but I also saw the sign that says, this is an open and affirming church. See, that's impressive. Not many churches are open or affirming. And that is grace. God is open and affirming. Every Sunday when we read what we call our, this uh, statement of oneness, you will notice that it says many hurtful and unjust things happen in the world, motivated by what? Hatred or fear. Yet, there is love in our hearts. So if you look at grace, the covenant of grace is that when you are baptized, when you accept the love of Jesus, and it was wonderful because later on you'll hear the testimony of Phyllis Martin. I was fortunate that uh, 
I got a copy of that, and you will hear her say, the first thing she learned was what? Jesus loves me, this I know. I say, wow, thank you, Lord. We didn't plan that, but you will hear uh, Julie Ann read her testimony. So if you want to know what is grace, grace is God's unconditional love to you. And grace is Jesus giving his life, saying that this is the new covenant. The new covenant also gives a new commandment. And the commandment is what? That we love one another. We love because God first loved us unconditionally. So every time you see the rainbow, you know, there are at least uh, seven primary colors. I hope that you see the covenant as one that calls us to accept God's love by faith. Noah found favor, grace in the sight of God. Enoch, in the Old Testament, what? Walk with God, was a friend of God, and God just took him to heaven. You will find that Abraham, you know, God called him and then changed his name to, uh, from Abram to Abraham, and God said, I'll bless you. What did Ab Abram do? No, nothing. That's the covenant. God said, I'll bless you and all your descendants. And you also know the story of Jacob. Jacob was not a very, actually, uh, of good character, but he, he received God's blessing. He wrestled with God. He was dislocated at the hip, but he said, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. God wants to bless us. And then his name was changed to what? Israel. So every time you see the rainbow in the sky, you know that God cares about you. God will not destroy us. You know that God will forgive us. You know that joy is the result of experiencing God's unconditional love. So whenever we think about what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, we are encouraged to uh, think about uh, this uh, story of Noah. Noah found favor in God's sight. When the television people were taking pictures of our church, because they also wanted to show that Peterson's Tavern, the first meeting place of the newly incorporated uh, village. They met at that location May the 3rd, 1834. So I think our church is in a wonderful location and I'm glad that the trustees are trying to find if we can do what we call a LED sign. Can you imagine if we can put all those LED sign out and send a message, people walk by, and the church has a lot of potential. You never know who is going to show up. You never know when God is going to bring them here. But we need to show them love, welcome, acceptance, forgiveness. So let us now sing our next hymn in the midst of new dimension, God of Rainbow, Fiery Pillar leading where the eagle saw. We, your people, ours the journey, now and ever, now and ever more.
like to remember Shane McGee, who is the grandson of Paul and Carol. He had uh, Lyme disease and is recovering. Uh, we also like to pray for Alan Garrett. Uh, Alan Garrett is uh, adopted uh, brother-in-law of Cindy, and uh, he had surgery with uh, recovery time uh, at least a week in Rochester Hospital. Let us bow our heads and go to God in prayer. Loving God, you come to us making a covenant with us to love us, to mold us, to be the person you want us to be. We pray for those whose names are listed and also for Shane McGee and for Alan Garrett and for other names that we mention in our hearts and minds. You know all our needs. Help us once again to experience your amazing grace that we may share your blessings with others. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. my sincere prayer that in sharing Phyllis's testimony with you that at a point you can see Phyllis, hear her, and feel her. I am honored to read her testimony today. I have not changed a word of it. Due to some health issues, I won't be able to be in church to read my paper, but Julianne has kindly volunteered to read it for me, and I thank her. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay. I can. Due to some health issues, I won't be able to be in church to read my paper, but Julianne has kindly volunteered to read it for me and I thank her. So in, excuse me just a moment, this is too important. So in Phyllis's words, I am 87 years old and I have had a long and very interesting faith journey, which involved five churches 
and four denominations and many stepping stones along the way. The changes in churches was always with the guiding of the Holy Spirit. My faith journey started at a young age when I experienced my first stepping stone when I learned Jesus loves me. How do I know? The Bible told me so. From that day to this, I never doubted that Jesus loves me. This was the foundation of my future belief in God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And we welcome the Son and fill us with us and the angels on the wall. My growing up years were spent in my neighborhood Presbyterian church until after my marriage to a young man I met at a church function who unfortunately was a juvenile diabetic which concerned my mother. It was a stepping stone of faith when I took my wedding vows in sickness and in health. My roots go very deep in the Presbyterian church. Due to circumstances when our daughter was ready for Sunday school, we attended my aunt and uncle's American Baptist Church. They are more liberal. A very big stepping stone during this time was when my husband and I were baptized together by immersion. I still remember coming up out of the water feeling so clean inside and out. It was an awesome experience. One summer, my daughter attended a neighborhood Sunday school type program where she met a girl who invited her to visit her conservative Baptist church. My daughter liked the church and activities, so my husband and I switched churches again I continued to attend this church after the death of my husband and my daughter's marriage. Unfortunately, my daughter had moved to California to be near her husband's naval base. She shortly became a victim of physical abuse and like so many others, refused to come home. This was a dark time in my life. I became sick with worry that I would receive a call from a hospital informing me of her serious injuries. The worry got heavier and heavier, and then a stepping stone appeared. It was Matthew 11:28, "Come unto me, who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest." For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I was still concerned, but I now knew that my daughter was being watched over. Later, she found the courage to leave the relationship. A short time later, she met a co-worker and moved in with him. He was 11 years older. I was not happy, but then I encountered another stepping stone, which reminded me that we are all in sin, but I am only responsible for my sins, no one else's. I now live with my daughter and her life partner, my son-in-law. They've been together 36 years. After seven years of widowhood, I was introduced to a bachelor farmer from Appalachian. I had prayed for a good man, and he had prayed for a widow. My Baptist friends told me I should have prayed for a good Baptist man, but the Holy Spirit knew what we needed to ask for. The only problem was he was Catholic and I was Baptist. His faith wouldn't allow him to change, but I could. So another stepping stone of faith with guidance from the Holy Spirit, 
I became Catholic. I enjoyed many of the rites observed by the church, but not all of them. My Presbyterian roots were too deep. Like many converts, I did all the ministries allowed to women. There are many. My favorite ministries being a lector liturgist and setting the communion table. This is prideful, but I was asked to be the lector liturgist whenever the bishops came to visit the church. My husband died in June as I was diagnosed with breast cancer in August. After a year of surgery, chemo, which came close to killing me, and radiation, my daughter and son-in-law decided my driving days were over, and I agreed. Several years passed, several years passed, when I had no church connection. One day, my friend Roberta decided she wanted to go to the church, and she let me tag along. After she had attended an Easter service at Red Park and admired the rainbow flag, she chose First Congregational Church. The rest is history. I joined the church and enjoyed making many new friends. And I'm going to say she misses you dearly. That's from me. I brought my talents for being a liturgist and experience in being a setter upper and cleaner upper of the communion table. I became more active when I had the honor of being a deacon. I also joined the Christian Education and Mission Committees. I also enjoyed the fellowship of the Wednesday Book Club. My activities are curtailed for the present time, but I am able to continue with my card ministry, which gives me a connection to the church, my connection to you. And I serve you today with my testimony in serving you in love. I also enjoy finding prayers for prayers from Phyllis, words from the Holy Spirit, which are put in the forecaster. There are two things, and this is a message from one, one of our very important elders. There are two things all churches need, no matter their denomination. These are Sunday school, Christian ed, all ages, teachers, and kitchen help. I've taught religious ed in all the churches I attended. Plus, I've always done my fair share of dishes in church, including pots and pans. If First Congregational Church had a Sunday school, I would be helping. I would be teaching. This is how I consider the time spent in my different churches. This is a summary. A proud Presbyterian, a contented Baptist, a happy Catholic, and thanks to Reverend Art Suggs, an enlightened Congregationalist. Who knows, there may, may be Who knows, there may be a stepping stone or two in my twilight years. God's blessings to each of you. I love you, Phyllis. Let us sing our last hymn for today. Debbie will sing it for us, perhaps Judy will too. We'll all home. God, when I came into this life,
other the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace. May the peace of God go with you. Amen.